past two. Time now to meet, meet a filmmaker from Clevedon who has, funnily enough, made a film uh, about domestic abuse. It's going to be screened at the Curzon Cinema in Clevedon on the 20th of November. Mark Baker has created Cool Planet Films. It's a good name. I've had a look at the site, Mark. It's looking very good. Uh, he's here with Roseanne forrest Gover, who stars in the film. Roseanne, we'll get around to talking to you. Hello, both of you. Hello. Thanks very much <laughs> for, for coming in this afternoon. Hello. So, Mark, is this the first film you've made? Yes. Yes, yeah, so I've done a lot of spoof music videos in the past, which were I basically did with family and friends and stuff like that, and they would just mess around. So um, it was kind of like I always wanted to make my first serious film and um, get it in the cinema. It was one of those... Um, was this like your sort of your bucket list, your to-do yes, list? Yes, that's right, yeah. It's just one of those things that you want to do achieving... Well, not and necessarily everybody, but certainly me. I just always wanted to make a serious Excellent. film and get it in the cinema. So, well done, and you've achieved that. Uh, yes, That's I've fantastic. achieved that and more, yeah. Yeah, but why this subject matter? Where did this idea... Tell me about Survivors, tell me about OK, that. um... I guess it was about six years ago. Um, I wrote this very basic storyline about two people who meet, and at that time it was the boyfriend who was getting abused by his father. Now, uh, the reason why I went down the abuse line, I do not know because I've never witnessed it or you really had any know. experience yeah. about it. So then it came up again about a year ago, actually this month, um, and I decided that I, you know, actually do a proper um, script for it. So mm -hmm. um, I then went from there. So I thought, right, um, you should write what you know, and I knew nothing about abuse, so yeah. therefore <laughs> I contacted uh, North Somerset's um, uh, domestic abuse line, and I spoke to the coordinator there, and she said, OK, what I'll do is, because a lot of charities may not want to get involved in this because yeah. I was producing a film, and, you know, they might think I have other reasons for doing it. And I said, well, no, the reason I want to do the film is because I want to get what I put in the film correct. You know, yeah. I don't, you know, I don't want it to be some um, ho Hollywood trash. So um, uh, they quite kindly put me in touch with Amanda from Seeds. Yeah, let's just is... explain that Seeds is Survivors Empowering and Educating Domestic Abuse Services. That's right. So uh, Amanda quite kindly contacted me and um, we, we w I went to her house and had a meeting with her. And she could see, I think, quite quickly that, you know, I was sincere. I wasn't trying to make any money out of this or anything for myself. Um, I was basically doing it for, um, you know, for good, good reasons. So um, after she told me um, a few nightmare stories, if you like, um, I'm quite seasoned. I worked for the police. I studied serial killers a long time ago. You did so what with serial killers? I, 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 I studied them. Studied them? Yeah. So I'm In what quite... capacity did you study serial killers? Um, well, I used to read about what they did and oh, okay. stuff like all, all the um, all the gory stories and stuff like that. Um, it's just one part of psychology that I, I, I was interested in. So I, I figured I was quite seasoned to some of the stuff that I'd heard. But however, after listening to Amanda and certainly some of the, the other victims she got me in touch with, um, it certainly knocked me sideways. Um, I just couldn't believe that one human being could do this to another human being. Also, in the name of love, they claim to these abusers came to love this person that they're they're abusing. So it was, uh, um, you know, after that I went and interviewed a lot more uh, victims, um, and they gave me their stories. So this once twenty minute film that I intended to make turned out to be an hour because I wow, got so much information. Okay. okay. But uh, the real the real test of it was um, when I completed the film. Um, I hoped that I'd gone down the right track, I'd filmed it in the right way, you know, I wasn't sensationalising violence in any way, you know, because I, I wanted to avoid absolutely. that in any way. Absolutely, yeah. Um, I played it to some of the victims and they just absolutely loved it. They just said, you know, you, you know the, the, the manipulation in the film was bang on, you know, of how, how they do it, um, how, the escalation of violence from when it starts to just verbal you know, up to physical and even going into sexual, etc., etc. Um so many elements of the film is many stories all put together in, in the film. So, Shall we have uh, a little clip? We've got a tiny clip. Um, do you want to tell me a little bit about this? Is where the picture goes missing. Tell me what yeah, this is about. This is, again, based on a true story. This is a victim who gave me um, uh, their story. Um, obviously, I'm not going to give you any details no, about that because it no, is no, no. An, an, an anonymous. Um, but, yeah, basically, I turned her story into a missing picture. And the way that this came about was we went to go to have a look at a site for potential filming. And I walked into, I walked down this hallway, which was absolutely fantastic. It was nice and dark, so you could get like an eerie feel to it. And I knew that 
filming it would be really good. But then when you walked into the bedroom, there was this massive picture of Marilyn Monroe on the wall, and I thought, oh, I could use that. So that's when I got this story and just changed it slightly and put the picture in there. So what's happened is the victim, which is Sophie, which is Rose sat here, um, she plays Sophie, she's walking into the bedroom, which is her mum's old bedroom, and this picture was her mum's favourite picture, and it's missing. And it's missing. Yeah. OK. And do you know what I think? I think you've done something with it. What would I have done with Mum's picture? Yeah, I think you took it. I didn't take Mum's picture. I definitely didn't take it. Nan didn't take it. So that leaves you. You took it, didn't you? What would I have done with it? You tell me. What would you have done with it? I bet you sold it. I would have sold Mum. Yeah, I would have sold sick. Mum's picture. You're sick. You'd sell your own mum's favourite picture. You're sick. Do you know that? You make me sick. Look at you. Smut. You make me ill. You took it, didn't you? Admit it. Admit it. Admit it, you took it. Where is it? Yes, Jake, I took it. Where is it? It's a little clip there um, from Survivors. Uh, let's uh, bring in uh, Rose, who's sitting here quietly yeah. listening to that. Hello. And you play Sophie. Yes, oh, Is that quite strange hearing that little yeah, clip there? Yeah, I don't like the sound of my own voice. <laughs> well, get used to it if you're an actor. <laughs> <laughs> you, along with all the other actors, gave your time for free, I understand. Yes, I did, yeah. yeah. And, and how, did it, how did you come to be in this? Um, basically, um, me and Mark were in a, a local music video um, called Sunnyside, and he actually played my uh, father, and I was the bride and uh, yeah he uh, gave me away so how was this for you was it very difficult um it was and it wasn't like obviously you know as a trained actor you know you're supposed to be able to kind of get into character and just accept you know that you've got to take on the role but it was in the sense that i've actually been not in a physically abusive relationship but actually in like more of like a mental kind of abusive relationship um like bullying and stuff like that so obviously to get into character i kind of took that on and like remembered that to kind of build my character so yeah at times like that was hard just having to like reminisce about like hard times i've actually been through and stuff like that yeah mm -hmm. and mark for you i know that the film sort of the emphasis changed from you need to get this film out because you need to make this film because that was on your wish list and that's what you want to do too I want to support these women. Yeah, it completely changed. Um, yeah, it, it, it just changed c completely. Once I started hearing all these nightmare stories, I was sort of, like, grateful that in my life is quite, you know, very normal, you know, compared to these people, and they go for it every single day. Um, and, it, yeah, it, very, it turned very much from, you know, like, 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 like you said, you know, from going to that to actually I want to support these women, I want to get this, I want to raise awareness for this, and if I can do this with this film, which uh, well, it seems to be going that way at the moment yeah and certainly the week that it's released which is the 20th of november um that week is international stop violence against women week so um yeah fits in very nice it's going yes, to be at the does, curzon yeah. cinema and then where's it going to be after that um well i'm hoping uh that the watershed um and uh there's another cinema in henley's is going to um do it as well um i just need them to call me back okay um, well, we'll discuss yeah. that afterwards um let's talk to amanda southern because i was going to ask you if the people from seeds had seen the film and I very briefly talked to Amanda before we came on air. Hello Amanda. Amanda Sutherland is from Seeds. Amanda, you've seen the film. What do you make of it? I think it's fantastic. I think Mark has been an absolute star in coming forward with the idea. Clearly, um, at the beginning, he had no personal experience of abuse and he did the right thing. He spoke to people who had been through it, who were able to give him realistic portrayals of what actually happened. And throughout that, he was able to show us his initial script. We were able to comment on it. I, I, I can't support him highly enough. He's, he's done a really good job in making this realistic um, and making people aware of the fact that this is happening in so many households. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Do you want to give us some statistics to remind us? Well, there's, there's one, one in four women will be affected by domestic abuse in, in their lifetime. Um, in, in, on average, in the UK, two women each week are killed by their partner or ex-partner. Um, it's, it's one of the um, highest, I think it's around about the 35% um, of, of, criminal, of uh, criminal violence in our country is domestic abuse now. It's a huge and growing trend. And of course, over the last couple of years with the recession, with difficulties with finances in the home, there has been an increase. And at the same time, the government's cutting resources. So it, it is a difficult issue. Yeah, so this is going to feed on from your point of view. It's going to help raise money and raise awareness. Is that right? 
Absolutely. I mean, we want people to know that firstly, there is help out there. If you're in this situation, there are people who can help you. The police will take you seriously and, and you know, get help. Don't sit back and suffer. That's, that's the first message. And then secondly, yes, of course, we're very grateful to Mark because he's given us the opportunity to raise some additional resources that will help our project to help other women. Amanda, just at this point of time, if anybody is listening to this and they did want to get hold of anybody, what, what would, for you, would be the first point of call? Well, obviously, if you're in a situation where you're in threat or you have just been assaulted in some way, then phone the police, dial 999. If it's not an emergency at this very moment, but you've recognised that you can't go on in the situation you're in, there are several organisations out there that can help. You can go onto the Women's Aid website, they will give you help, and they will also help you to hide the fact that you've been on that website if you're being checked up on by your partner. Um, NADA within North Somerset are an excellent support group. They will help you through everything you need to know, whether it be housing, financing, uh, going to the police, etc. They'll give you all the support, court appearances, etc. There are, there are organisations out there, so we'd really encourage you to, to speak up, get some help before it gets worse. OK, Amanda Sutherland from Seeds, thank you very much for your time. Have a lovely weekend. Uh, Mark and Rose, thank you both very much for coming into the studio. So Curzon Cinema then, the 20th of November. Yeah. You'll be there in your tuxedo, no <laughs> doubt. Yeah, we've got a limo and everything. We're, we're, we're actually making a night of it, you know. Oh. We, we want to remember it. And, you know, just to highlight that, all the profits do go to these charities. I'm not making any money out of this whatsoever. Good man. Thank so. you very much. And Thanks the film is called Survivors. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks.